Welcome to Dodgers Dogs. As part of the Dodgers Daily Network, Casey Porter here joined by Coach Holt. Coach, and today, this morning, whatever, whenever you're watching this show, it's going to be all about keeping perspective because, quite frankly, last night, yesterday, was a complete disaster. I mean, the Dodgers got beat from the very get-go. They were never in the game. And then the Padres were losing, and, and you're like, okay, well, at least the Padres might not pick up a game because of it, and the Padres come back and win. And then the D-backs won. And it was like, okay, well, yesterday's just one of those days. Yeah, it, it is just one of those days. It started out bad, as we mentioned off the air, Case. started out bad and it's got worse, you know. Uh, you know, f- feeling bad for Miller, but feeling bad for Miller and, and, and getting stuff, you know, we're getting down to the part of the year where we need to start seeing better results out of him. I think Coach Rock, you know, Dave Roberts even mentioned that, you know, in the post game. you know, it's about performance and, and that sort of thing, you know. And I think he even said he felt good last night, but uh, – Performance, location, all that stuff, as we know, it doesn't matter how hard you throw, you have to pitch. And I think he's still – he's not there yet, and it's kind of getting alarming that we're getting this close to playoffs without that. But, you know, we know he's got the talent, but, you know, that, that doesn't matter if it, if it – and I'll use Dave Roberts' words of performance. So, that's kind of where it started last night. <clears throat> they had the big inning starting out, but, yeah, it was a disaster from, from day one. <laughs> The process part of it's over. I mean, the 162-game grind, the process of all that, of just kind of working things together, all of that's done. Now it's about, okay, who are my best pitchers? Who are my best position players? That's who I have to play every day because, as we mentioned, the Padres aren't going away. The D-backs aren't going away. So, I mean, it's a game of cutthroat right now. Who are my guys that I can win with every single day? And you got to go from there. Yeah, and that's that's the only way you can approach it. You know, like I said, we've already mentioned. You know, we're past the dog days of summer. You know, now yes, it's crunch right. days. We're down to crunch time, as we mentioned. The Diamondbacks' potties aren't going away, and they're going to be in the playoffs. So just mm-hmm. get ready. I mean, so one way or another, they're not disappearing here. And if we can hold on the race, and I think we will going forward, but you're still probably going to have a chance of seeing one one on, and maybe even both of them in the playoffs. You know, uh, at some point. So. It, it's just about, like you said, it's all about perspective right now. Just, you know, you just got to come out every day. It, and we've played a lot of people. The Dodgers have played a lot of people recently because they've had to. But you just mentioned it right there. That that gives the coaching staff, they, they've had, these people have had a pretty good sample size, the ones that have been with the Dodgers all year, especially, of who they can go with, who they can't go with. And pitching's going to come down to who we're going to get back. You know, Yamamoto's on the mm-hmm. horizon. Uh, we, you know, they say we'll get Kershaw back, you know, Joe Kelly. I mean, you know, Bueller's looking a little bit better, actually. You know, he's he starting yeah. to come around a little bit. And and uh, Glass now, it looks like we're going to get him back. And, you know, Flaherty's been a, a great pickup because he's kind of been an anchor on, the, on that starting staff. And mm-hmm. Gavin Stone has, too. So, that that's good. So, I think we've got to, we'll have enough. If those guys come back off injury, that changes our perspective quite a bit. But if not, going forward, you know, you know, we'll just have to piece it together and, and know you can put a, a you know an elite offensive lineup on the field every day. It's hard to play offense when you're in a 7-0 hole, 8-0 yeah. hole, that kind of stuff. We talked about that the other day. Yep. Hey, Coach, baseball's crazy. You know, the Dodgers are playing great baseball. They're playing a terrible team in the Angels. Griffin Canning has the third worst ERA in all of the American League. I mean, it just looks like a game you're going to go in there and cruise. And you don't. It's like the best laid plans in this game just never work out. And, and we've talked about it on every major league sport level. You know, I mean, uh, I mean the White Sox are off the charts of the terrible year they've had. But yeah, you, know, right. you look at the Angels, Dodgers coming through. Oh, there's a two game sweep. And you mentioned the guy's stats. He's a major league pitcher. You know, we we, we forget. You know, go back. He's still a multi million. He's still a million dollar pitcher. Right. He's still a major league pitcher with elite stuff, or he wouldn't be there. So, you know. You look at it, like, hey, we got, but you know, if the guy's on, the guy's on, and you just might as well get ready, and and that's kind of what you run into there. The guy, you had a great night, and uh, against the elite offensive team, and you just tip your hat and move on. That's about all you can do. Four and a half game lead over the Padres, five over the D-backs. I was listening to Earl Hershiser. He mentioned that the Padres are the biggest problem because they have the tiebreaker over the Dodgers. The D-backs do not. So. It's going to be fun coming down the stretch. It's going to stay close. Okay, so if you can pick some out of last night, here are the positives that I came away with. Gavin Lux went two for three again. His average is up to 256. OPS is 719. So that OPS, he's been like one of the highest OPSs in the last month of anybody in baseball. 
381 in the last seven games. So Gavin Lux, definitely a positive. Andy Paha has got an RBI base hit. He's back up. I think that's a positive for both him and the Dodgers. But I think the biggest positive last night was that you have an off day today, which you're already in Los Angeles. So, it, you know, most of your off days are spent traveling. Not this one. This is going to be a real off day because the Dodgers are already sleeping in their own beds. They're already in Los Angeles. And then because of the blowout, Doc was able to get a whole bunch of guys out and off their feet. So you're getting a little bit of a break from the game last night and then the entire break for today. You show up tomorrow at 4 o'clock for some BP, probably show up at the stadium at 3 o'clock. That'll be a nice long break. I think that's the biggest positive of last night. Yeah, we mentioned the last last episode with UK so that, that Roberts able to he, he's been very good at finding times to rest some of those guys, some especially the elite stars that need need a break, and then nagging injuries. Everybody's got nagging injuries. We hear about Freddie yeah, Senior, right. but everybody that takes the field's got something. You know, at this time of year, you know, yeah. it's not enough to keep them off the field. That's how Ripken played uh, three thousand games, whatever the heck it was in a row, because you know he didn't feel good every day either. So guys are going out there. And do that. Robert's done a good job of being able to rest people when he can, and, and he'll continue to do that. You know, it's a lot easier if you got a 14 half game lead like you did last year, but you don't. So, yeah, that's the card you're dealt. Like I said, I kind of like it. Like I told you last time, Case, that the Dodgers are going to have to battle right down to the end. Yep. And no matter who's out there, next man up, I'm sorry he's gone, but, you know, we're in a pennant race. We're still in a pennant race. So, you know, I think I think they keep that edge going, you know, you, know, you continue to play and keep that edge. It's usually the sharpest teams going into the playoffs. I would totally agree. And also, Coach, getting into Bobby Miller last night, obviously the first inning was rough for him. He had some moments where it looked like he was going to bounce back, and then you know he kind of went right back into Mark Pryor having to go out and talk to him again. So here's where I'm at with him. I just think that his situation last night was much more sequencing than it is execution. Sometimes it's, it's like an offense in football. You have this playbook that's like this big, right? And you have a whole bunch of weapons. And then the next thing you know, you're like running 7,000 plays. And you're not necessarily great at any of them, right? And then you struggle a little bit. And then your coach goes, okay, well, here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to make our playbook a lot smaller. And we're going to get just a lot better at the handful of plays that we actually can run. It just seems like his sequencing is just a hodgepodge right now. It's like you never know when – like one pitch isn't working off the next because he's not sequencing pitches together. Right. He's just throwing an arsenal of really great pitches that are great pitches by themselves, but he's throwing them independently, so they're all having to function and perform independently. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I just don't see sequencing that's working towards uh, you know specific mixes and specific pitches to help them work off each other. Yeah, I mean, we've all done that. I, I, I know I, I was always a baseball guy. I got hired to be a head high school basketball coach. So I, so I had to go to work and start talking to people that knew something about it. And I had a playbook about that thick. I've told you that story for a case. And a yeah. good friend of mine who's a great coach in the state of Oklahoma goes, how many of those plays you run in the game? And I started thinking, we practice them every day. It's not quite that thick, but it was thick. We practice them every day. Most of them I very seldom use. He said, get good, like you just said, get good, have something ready for every situation. If it's a half court, full court, press, whatever. So, so I small, got smaller with a playbook, got real good at those things we could do against yes. every situation. We, I became a better coach because I, well, I had better players also. They got better as we got going. But it, it's the same thing. You, you shrink that playbook down and get good at what you do. You see uh, – Lincoln Riley walk around with a little piece of paper. Homer yeah. Sims do the same thing. These guys are big-time offensive big coaches. Yeah. He's got a folded-up piece of paper. And I know what Holgerson's here at OSU, they ran about eight – eight play, they had about eight plays. Yes. It was based off what the defense does to them. We all yes. know that in football. So we're kind of, it's kind of the same thing you're talking about. Get get good at what you do, who you are. It's the same for a pitcher. You got to sequence. You got to set hitters up. You you, you mentioned it perfectly. You got to set pitches up. You know, I've got to show him. You know, the old video that came out recently. You know, Greg, Greg Maddox threw an inside pitch, knowing Bagwell's going to hit a home run because he's not going to throw it to him in the playoffs. He, right. He's planning ahead. But yeah. That's what guys do. Of course, Maddox is off the charts. It's not fair to compare anybody to that that genius, but. 
I'm just saying you're, you're absolutely correct. Sequence and setting pitches up, setting up the next pitch, setting the hitter up for the next time you see him, setting him up for a month from now. That's it's all a part of the game. And, and stuff is not his issue. You know, he even said last night he felt good. He's been feeling yeah, really good. Yeah, I agree. Stuff is not his issue. And, and you, you just hope that every maybe every game, I think he had 11 starts and four of them he's given up at least five runs. So, you know, that that's just, as you mentioned, that's just sequencing amongst other things. Yeah, and he's the home run ball. I mean, it, he's always, of course, his fastball, his four-seam fastball has not been good against lefties. So kind of my point is, and, and I've said this many different times, instead of trying to throw the ball 101 miles an hour to the opposite the opposite um, uh, bat, you know, a righty to a lefty, he's righty to a lefty, right. throw a 96-mile-an-hour cutter that, that comes in underneath their hands, you know, because that glove side – Fastball has always been a problem for Bobby Miller, at least at times. The sinker looked good at times, but then it had way too much movement. You know, I know and when he hit Nito, he hit Nito with the sinker. That was like, dang, man, that thing moved like 11 feet, it seemed like. And so, I mean, I know he got squeezed early on. Yeah. But kind of here's an example of that. He threw the sinker that had the big movement. And then, you know, he goes, he throws a 3-2 curveball. And it's like, okay, this is Bobby Miller. Let's throw the ball. 98 with decent movement. Let's not get too cute with this. So, okay, what are the two or three best pitches for Bobby Miller? Let's go with that sequencing. And then, like, every once in a while, Coach, you talked about your playbook shrinking. But then you could call a timeout and say, okay, here's what we're going to do off of our base offense we've been running. Every once in a while, he can sprinkle in something else. But I just think he needs to define what he actually is good at right now. No, I totally agree. Trying to do too much. You know, first of all, build off what you have. First of all, you got a you got a God given arm and body. Mm -hmm. You know that, that guys die for to be in the big leagues or in any league. Uh, you've got that. Build off that, and yeah, yeah. Still throwing a hundred. Yeah, like you said, Case go ninety six, ninety eight with a cutter. You know, or spot it, move the fastball in position. I think Roberts even mentioned that also about location of the fastball. You know, if you go, you throw it. It's got it's got to be location. That that's the case for anybody. Even a guy that threw it 106 the other night and get the fastest strikeout or whatever in the history of baseball, whatever. I have a hard you time know. believing some of those numbers. I do too. I do too. Yeah. I, I know the gun at uh, in Oklahoma City. You work down there. They used to tell me that gun was pretty hot down there. They mm -hmm. said it's like five miles an hour hotter or under. I think it was under actually. Wasn't yeah. It? yeah, to lefties. Yeah, to lefties. Yeah. It, so, so each of these guns, everybody, whatever. I agree with you there. You know, I don't know whatever 106. But anyway, that's another another story. But uh, he, he's got he's got to get. Get, just get good at what you do. I mean, you can't all be Mariano Rivera just throws a cut over pitch and cars people up because right. that's a once in a lifetime god. You know, baseball god it never happens. But you know, but, but everybody's got. to – I see somebody. I watch a game. They'll show a pitch and they'll show all his pitches. He'll have like six or eight pitches now. Somebody's not throwing very much. And in my mind, is a little Oklahoma high school baseball coach. I'm going, hey, that's isn't that too many to be throwing. Man, come on, I mean, man. Come on. I mean, I mean, even in, in our level case, we would say, hey. We need to show something, you know. We, he can't throw a curveball with a crap, but I've got to show it. You know, yeah, we've got, we've got to have our. We've got to have. There's our a difference between throw. showing something and making that part of your every pitch arsenal, right? Absolutely, we, we just yeah. got to show it once in a while, but we're not going to throw it as, as an arsenal pitch, and and that's us high school guys doing that stuff, and I'm sure they do it on every level at some point. But yeah, narrow it down. What do you do well? Work, you know. Spot it up, and because you know we've got to have him. I mean, there's no doubt we we had to have him last year. It didn't go well for him in the playoffs, but he was our number two guy last year going in the playoffs. So we've got to have him, and of course we've got to get the other guys back too. But we don't we don't can't see the future yet. We we right. know what those guys look like when they're healthy. Oh, right. it's wonderful. We got a great. They're not. Yeah. And you don't they're know right. if they're going to be when they get back. Even Yamamoto, he's Good been out a long time. What's he going to be? You know, what, what, you know, how, how two or three innings may probably start now as it starts when he gets back. Uh, you don't know, you don't know where they're going to be, you know, and, and, I, and nobody can guarantee that. Bullpen's one thing, throwing out there against real hitters is another. So I'm going to ask you this question before we move on for Bobby Miller. What is he good at right now? If I were to ask you to define Bobby Miller, what is Bobby Miller as a pitch? Who is he as a pitcher? What is he good at right now? What would your answer be? Well, it's not. I don't feel like his location is where it needs to be. So, but what he's good at, what he's good at is throwing a throwing the fastball. What he's not good yeah. at is locating it. I'll just right. say that, in yeah. my opinion. In my opinion, it just doesn't seem like he's defined himself. What what he is, what he wants to be, 
and you know what he can hang his hat on you know because everybody needs something they can hang their hat on that's what i'm talking about we 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 know that he's a hundred mile hour pitcher you know and we know he can hit a hundred you know so my answer is kind of what you just said all, i do know that's all i know about him that's all i can you know and that's again i'm not with him every day i'm not mark Pryor. i'm not sure. a major league sure. manager i never pitching coach i never played the major and i'm not sitting there like i know it all just right. the guy watching uh right. yeah i thought yeah, he's got he's got a great fastball, but it, but it can't be down the middle. A lot of right. that's the way I look at it. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on from him because I think Bobby Miller has a very very bright future. Yep. But as you mentioned, hey, this is this is where the rubber's meeting the road with this season. There, there's not a whole lot of time left of runway to say, hey, we need to get this guy right. They have to. There's a certain point of the season to where that's over and it has to be right at that moment. So we'll move on, Coach. I think maybe one of the Biggest disappointments from last night was that after you had the big inning, the five spot, the Dodgers struck out three times the next inning. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like whenever you start as a manager, you're going, okay, well, we gave up the big five spot. That was tough. All right, guys, how are we going to respond to this? Let's scrap back. Let's get back in the game. Let's figure it out. And then you go out and strike out three times. It's kind of like, oh, okay, well, maybe tonight's not going to be a good night. <laughs> well, it's like we, we got to start somewhere. You know I mean? Yes. Here. Hey, that's great. And I know the big leagues, you know, they're, they're, they're cranking. Everybody's trying to crank homers. I get that. And I, I'm not a hitting coach. I don't, whatever. I'm a small time hitting coach, but yeah, we got We got to just, I try to get one run, you know, yep, before right. we do anything else, let's get one run and see, you know, then you get a couple of guys on, you got some elite players that bang one. Now, you know, you're right in the game, but I'll just shut up about that. Cause you know, <laughs> you, you played for me. You know how I am oh, about yeah. that stuff. So Absolutely. I'll just shut up. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. Last night's game, it is what it is. It's over. There's the negativity for uh, that that came from last night's game. You got to cover it. You can't just gloss over it and say everything's okay. There's tough conversations to be had about Bobby Miller, about the game itself, because you're in the middle of a race. But, hey, bouncing back, Coach, I think that the Cleveland Guardians coming in, they are very good. Yep. You get the day off. I think the Dodgers will be absolutely smoking and ready to go for the Guardians this weekend. Yeah, it's 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 great for the Dodger fans. We don't get to see the guard. I say we. I don't live in L.A., but those guys that go to games all the time, they don't get to see the Guardians a lot. And and they've got great young players. It's a it's a really good team right now. So that's exciting for the Dodger fans. They don't only get to watch their beloved Dodgers play, but you got an elite team coming in, and 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 the games mean so they all mean something. But these are these are these are tough games. I mean you. You can sweep them or you get swept. That's how good these guys are. So it's exciting to see the Guardians come in. And I'm glad the guys got a day off today. You know, they're, they're in beautiful L.A. Sleep in. Take your lovely wife and kids and doggies and go for a walk and go to a movie or chill out or whatever you guys do on your day off. Golf. A lot of them golf, I guess. But, you know, I'm glad they get a day off. And like I said, like you said, they slept in their own bed last night. That's the best part about this. So we had a little short two-game series. So, you know, they get that day off. And to those guys, it's 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 massive to get a day off, you know, especially when they're not traveling. Like you said, most of their days off, they're in the air, but they're at least they're not traveling and they can uh, eat breakfast with the wife and kid, take the kids to school, do whatever they do, and have, have, a, have a normal quote-unquote day before it gets crazy again to, tomorrow night at Dodger Stadium. I promise you, this off day right here where they've been seeing it, where they're already in Los Angeles, no travel – I promise you they've been looking forward to this off yep. day for a long time. This yep. is going to be a really nice day for these guys. No, it's great. You know, we, we forget that about them because they are multi-million dollar yes. players. Elite, the greatest players on the face of the earth are Major League Baseball players, no doubt. You know, we forget that. These dudes are their 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 husbands, their their fathers, their their sons. I mean, yep. they're they're just they're they're normal people, and they don't get to live that normal life very often. You know. I, they just don't get it. And this today's yep. a day. Hey, you know, be a normal person. Be a, be, be a dude. I used to tell you guys, the gates are going to be locked, the water's on. Don't come to the ballpark. Go do something. Go fish. And, of course, you and Brad to go fish anyway, whether yeah, that's right. or not. And you guys go fish or do whatever you do and let it go. And yeah. nobody's doing baseball tomorrow. So, and that's just the American Legion. Of course, that's a short period of time, Case. You know, back in the day, we played a major league schedule, basically. Yeah, no well, doubt. Well, if we didn't have rainouts, which didn't have very many this summer in Oklahoma, it was for a short period of time. It was like a major league schedule. So we got a day off. Yeah. I remember how much it meant to me and I, I just always tell you guys hey field needs water gates are locked don't jump the fence get the heck out or i'll see you whenever but and and, and you, know, you just imagine that times 10 of these big league guys who've already played you know 140 mm-hmm. some games already they, so i'm glad they get it and, and looking forward to a great series of the guardians 
No doubt. You used to tell my kids, I promise you, there's not anybody here that loves baseball as much or more than I do, and I don't want to be at the ballpark yes. tomorrow. So I know you don't. Yep. So get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's, it's time. We all need to go do something, Take our, play with our Dodger dogs and take the wife to Sonic absolutely. and the movie, do something. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Some, everybody has that. I, I can remember those dog days in, in American Legion. Yeah. Some of the greatest memories yeah. of my life. There's days. I look forward to those off days. I can only imagine what these big leaguers are yeah. like. Yeah. Hey, Coach, you got any final thoughts? This has been a fun show, of course. It's never fun when you have to talk about a loss. And, and then both the D-backs and the Padres won yesterday. So there is some negativity to it. You know, it's it's not fun to talk about negative things first thing in the morning. But, again, you got to do it. And then you got to bounce back from that negativity. And you got to move on and figure out all the things that are positive and dwell on them as you move forward. So final thoughts. First of all, again, the Padres and D-backs aren't going away. We know yes. that. We've said that numerous times. That's great. I'm glad that they're not. They're they're pressuring the Dodgers, putting the heat on the Dodgers. And again, with, with Bobby Miller, I love Bobby Miller. I know you do too. We watched him come up mm-hmm. through the minor leagues. You know that guy's working every. You know, I'll give back the positive side. He's like everybody else up there. He's working every day, every minute of every day, to be the best he can be. And it just you know it just didn't quite there yet. But but. I'd love to be Bobby Miller with a hundred mile an hour arm trying to figure it out, and some other guys who don't have that. You know, he's got the one. Th- he's got the one thing that's that's uh, the positive. So, you know, I love the guy. I know you do too. I'm not going to sit here and bash him. You know, it's just, it's just some, a couple rough starts here he's had, and and and, it, and it's just fine tuning. I guess is the best way of putting it. You call it sequence, and same thing, fine tuning. And and like I said, a lot of strikeouts. You know, in, in time we got behind early. This it just wasn't a good day, but you know. That that's baseball. It happens, and uh, we're still the best teams in Major League Baseball. If not the best team in Major League Baseball, despite everything. So, yep. uh, just just keep plugging away, guys. Enjoy your day off today, and yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, look forward to the Guardians and, and go Dodgers. Hey, I will say this: I love Bobby Miller. I love all these guys. I love the Dodgers more. It always comes down yep. to what's best for the team. And I think the best thing that we've said today is the runway is running out as far as the process goes. So. The, the club is having to make decisions that are that are bottom line based. So whatever they choose to do with these guys and, and, and their opportunities moving forward, uh, you know, just support all of that. And yep. and because they've done a great job of, of of making decisions to the bottom line. We've seen them cut a couple of guys, Jason Hayward being one of them, yep. you know, earlier James Paxton. They did him Ryan Yarbrough. So, hey, th- this is a front office that won the trade deadline. They won the offseason. Because of it, the Dodgers have had a great season. And so they're going to make decisions, but they've shown that are best for the club, and I'm all in for whatever they decide to do. So, hey, this has been a whole lot of fun, Coach. Really appreciate it. You know that that uh, it's always awesome when I get to see your face, and you know I love you. Love you too, Case, and look forward to the weekend, and look forward to seeing you again on Dodger Dogs here. Okay, Coach, we'll see you. And for everybody else out there, I want to uh, thank you for tuning in. And, hey, just stick around because on the other side, we're going to take a trip down on the farm. Welcome to Dodgers Daily down on the farm. Going to start our segment as we do each and every time at Single A Rancho Cucamonga. And who you're seeing right here is Yun Sok Yang, who gave the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes another really nice outing. Two innings pitched, no hits, no runs, three strikeouts, and one walk. You see that nice little fastball to the outer half, the arm side corner to the outer half to lefties. That would be inside to righties. And then we're going to see here with two strikes, Watch this little slider that gets in on the hands for the strikeout to the lefty right here. You're getting ready to see that pitch right here. That slider right there. Nice pitch. That little sideways left turner that plays really well off of his fastball. ERA for Yang right there. See, there's that same arm side corner inside your righties. There's that other, uh, another big, big slider. So you've seen the arm side uh, corner being hit to both lefties and righties. You've seen a slider. That got a strikeout to a lefty. It got a nice strike to a right-hander. And then there is another slider right there that gets soft contact. So ERA for Yang is just 219 with Rancho. His whip is 097. Average against is just 100. And he has 19 strikeouts and 12 innings. So it's definitely going to be very exciting and very fun to watch Yang as he develops 
and he makes his way through uh, the system next year in affiliated baseball. So super excited about that. As the minor league system wears down or, or, or uh, rolls down, I should say, we're now going to move our way up to high A Great Lakes, a team in the Great Lakes Loons that has really struggled to score as of late. So when Kyle Nevin got that first RBI hit yet last night, it was a really a sight for sore eyes because uh, the Loons had not scored in a while. Matter of fact, Kyle Nevin had two hits yesterday. Surprise, surprise. First one up the middle. The second one went to right center. He does, just does such a great job of staying inside the baseball. Hey, the average is what it is. We talk about the process. But I really think I've said this a couple of times now. I think Kyle Nevin has the setup to be the type of hitter that can become a better hitter the better the pitching gets as the levels advance because he's going to get more strikes. He's going to have more detailed game plans that he can actually game plan against. You know, sometimes in the lower levels you're facing so many different guys and it's it's just kind of here and there. You, you, your game plan is, well, I'm going to look for a pitch in this location. Well, I'm going to try to get a pitch here or there. Or maybe you might be looking for one pitch from a guy. But by the time you get up to the major leagues, obviously you're going to know – just about in every count and every situation, exactly what pitch and what location each pitcher throws. I think that type of information really helps a setup like Kyle Nevin. So I do think there is a chance that Nevin actually gets better as a hitter as he moves up through the system. And so I think that's going to be something that, that's interesting to follow because, like I said, I really do like his setup. I like the way that he lets the ball get deep. And I just like his potential, if he swings at the right pitches, to have uh, bat, good bat-to-ball skills. And then last night for Rancho Cucamonga, how about the free agent signing a couple years ago of LaVon Reynoso, who just continues to throw well. He's, he, he's getting better and better with Rancho, which is no surprise with, with Richard De Los Santos and Dave Anderson. They do just such a wonderful job there with the pitching. Through a scoreless 1.1 innings, so four outs last night for LaVon Reynoso. Did not give up a hit, throwing gas like he always does. And by the way, Reynoso got the win last year or last night, which was his sixth win of the season. Lots of momentum for Reynoso. That's what you want to do to end a minor league season. Just end the season with good momentum. Well, how about the momentum he's built for himself? He's gone scoreless in six of his less, uh, last seven outings, and he's given up just three runs in his last 16.2 outings. So it has been a, a good period of baseball for LeVon Reynoso, no doubt about that. And so uh, it's good to see him build some momentum for himself as we end the minor league season, which ends this week for the Great Lakes Loons. So, hey, we're going to move on up now to the the high A level, and we're going to talk about uh, – that. we're going to continue to talk about – excuse me, we're going to move up to the double A level now, and now we're going to talk about switch hitting shortstop Noah Miller, who had three hits last night for Tulsa, including his third double uh, since being promoted to double A. So, you know, Noah Miller, he won what's the equivalent of the Gold Glove Award – for minor league shortstops last year. So we know he has the potential to be extremely, extremely good defensively. And as we've seen with the Los Angeles Dodgers lately, I know we've talked about it several different times in our Dodgers dog show. Hey, Will Smith throwing out runners. Miguel Rojas or Tommy Edmond at short. Gavin Lux has played good defense at second. And then center field with Kevin Kiermaier and Tommy Edmond. The defense has been fantastic. So being strong up the middle defensively has a lot of value then also Noah Miller is a switch hitter that has a lot of value so the numbers don't look great here in 2024 but I do think that Noah Miller has the potential as a switch hitter to be a very solid if you will offensive player and to be honest with you with the way that he plays defense and the value of having a strong defense up the middle I think if he's just a solid offensive player that makes him a very effective player so good to see Noah Miller get three hits last night. And I'll tell you what, probably the most consistent and maybe just straight up the best pitcher from start to finish starting-wise as far as a starting pitcher all year long for the AA Tulsa Drillers has probably been this man right here, Orlando Ortiz Mayer. 6.1 innings last night. He gave up one hit, two earned runs, 
five strikeouts, and three walks. So, hey, his stuff's not going to blow you away. It's going to be 92, 93, 94. He can hit the five every now and then. But it's just his consistency. So, through six innings, he had given up just one run last night. He tried to work through the seventh inning, and that is significant because this is a guy that gives his team's length, his team length. He hasn't missed a start, so there's number one. Has not missed a start. Orlando Ortiz Mayor has not. And he's gone at least five innings in 17 of his starts this year, and he's given up two runs or less 14 times. So it's very important to have guys like this in your system, guys like Orlando Ortiz Mayer that don't get a whole lot of headlines, but just really just knock down innings, and they do a great job of, of covering situations and innings that uh, you know, even teams that at the beginning of the year, the, the Tulsa drillers were so talented, even teams that are as talented as Tulsa. So want to give mad props and mad respect to Orlando Ortiz Mayer, who probably has been the best pitcher, starting pitcher for the Tol- the AA Tulsa drillers this year and definitely has been the most consistent. So, hey, going to move our way up now to the – Triple A level, Triple A Oklahoma City, and this is Cody Hosey again. Two more hits last night, including a ground rule double that you're getting ready to see right there, dead center. And hey, I've mentioned it a couple times. It's not the fact that he's hitting as well, which he's absolutely hitting great. 333 in August, OPS 859, and he's three for his last eight this week with the home run and that double you saw. So, yes, he is hitting great. But he is driving the baseball. That's exactly what you want to see from Cody Hosey. Just waiting for his opportunity. Just got to continue to grind and control what he can control and wait for the opportunities to open up, which you never know if it's going to happen, but you have to believe it will, and you just have to continue to play really good baseball like Cody Hosey has done all last year. But the headlines last night in Oklahoma City were stolen by this young man, no doubt about it, Yun Il Choi. Yun Il Choi turned in a great start for AAA Oklahoma City. Five innings, five hits, just one earned run, six strikeouts, and one walk. His game, Yun Il Choi, has always been changing speeds and having pinpoint location. I have had probably four or five times to where I've communicated with him and we were going to do an interview, and either I couldn't make it or he couldn't make it but I'm going to try to make it to Oklahoma City this week sometime and talk to Choi because he is a wonderful young man, has just a happy-go-lucky personality. He loves being in America, and I'll tell you what, he's had his ups and downs this year. There's absolutely no doubt about it, but he has built a lot of momentum to end this season. As a matter of fact, his ERA in his last five games, Yonel Choi is 286. And he's gone at least five innings in his last four starts. And he's gone at least five innings in six of his last uh, last eight. So basically all I can say to that is add a baby, young El Choi. Way to fight through the ups and downs. Get yourself back on top of the game. We know he's the 2021 Dodgers Minor League Pitcher of the Year. That tells you just exactly how talented he is. So good job, young El Choi.